I don't know what it is, but I've been seeing a lot of JoJo talk on my Discord recently, and we haven't made a character analysis in a while, so I thought to myself, why not make a character analysis on a JoJo character? Why not make a character analysis on a Joestar? And honestly, I've long been wanting to make a video on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but I didn't know how I wanted to approach it. Did I want to go sequentially? And then I eventually came to the realization, no, fuck that, <laughs> I'm gonna do whatever I want. So today we're talking about something that is present in a lot of very popular characters, hopefully not present in your partner, someone that is kinda toxic, but I love him, Joseph Joestar. There will be spoilers for JoJo's in this video, so if you haven't seen the series, English or Spanish, now you can't move, you have to watch the video. So without further ado, let's dissect JoJo. And as always, we begin with asking the question, who is Joseph Joestar? Besides being the protagonist of Battle Tendency, he is an idiot. In the best way possible. I mean, dude, the first thing he does when we are introduced to him is assault a police officer. And he doesn't do it with a regular weapon. He doesn't do it with his fists. He does it with fucking bottle caps, soda, the bane of Americans. And speaking of assault, he somehow manages to take an assault rifle out of his fucking asshole and shoot up a diner. That's all within like two episodes. And as we go through this character analysis, you'll see more examples of how he's an idiot in the best way possible, but man, he's just unhinged. He's really got crackhead energy and it makes people love him. Also, this character analysis will be covering part two of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, so part three and part four will not be touched upon so much. Furthermore, JoJo is an 18-year-old, 195-centimeter Chadley Chad Alpha Sigma male who honestly puts me to shame. I'm a little jealous. I feel like if you injected him with steroids, he would somehow end up smaller. <laughs> And I mean, really, this is the case for a lot of JoJo's characters. I've actually never seen Araki. This guy must be huge. Let's, let's, I have to see this. Okay, so Araki does not seem like he's built like a Joe star, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's a little older here. Maybe when he was younger, <laughs> he looked like that. Regardless, the Joe star, just like many fitness Instagram influencers, made a career out of setting unrealistic body expectations. That's just how it goes, I guess. But on that note, just like many Joe stars, he is caked the fuck up. Just like your boy, he has a level 10 gyat. But something much more important is that he hates Japanese people. It's because he's New York's Jojo. It's because he's the American Jojo. He's spreading patriotism and nationalism, even in an anime. And I mean, this line, I'll never forgive the Japanese. This isn't, this isn't even because of Pearl Harbor. He literally lived through World War II. It's because his daughter married a Japanese man. Jojo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but we can all forgive him because he sounds like Gintoki. If you've never seen Gintama, the voice actor for Gintoki, the voice actor for Joseph Joestar, I actually think adds so much to the character. He's, he's an incredible comedian and he's an incredible voice actor. They nailed it with the casting and the voice actor did an incredible job bringing this character to life. Now, his ultimate move is also to up and run, which is kind of based in a battle shonen seinen. But more than anything, he's the king of assholes. I don't even want to talk about the volcano. I don't even want to talk about the fact that he was shot into space and then fell through the atmosphere and somehow survived. But throughout the series, he's predicted so many things and so many things have just gone his way. Like, bro, where the fuck did the plane come from when you jumped off the cliff? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but he makes it work. Let's move on to what has JoJo done? Now part two isn't particularly long, but JoJo still managed to amass quite the sizable resume because first of all, he did tequila, which was awesome. It's doing it for me. JoJo should do drag more often. But also, how the fuck did you find women's clothes that fit you? That is unrealistic. I, I, I struggle to find clothes that'll fit me. He teamed up with a literal Nazi. Shout out Homelander. He tripped and tortured a cat. If you don't know, here's the video. So far, he sounds like quite the fucking guy. Then he lost to a guy that used bubbles as his primary offense, and I'm not even talking about the Powerpuff Girl, and then he managed to commit elder abuse four times. Four separate occasions. That's almost as bad as me when I was ranking which Jujutsu Kaisen characters I would beat in a fight. On a completely unrelated note, the pillar men in this picture look like they're about to drop the fucking most Fuego rap album of 8000 BC. Like, holy shit. And in regard to the Pillarmen real quick, which could have a video in and of themselves, Santana and SEDC are the biggest jobbers known to man. They, they could have won. And they're just fucking stupid. <laughs> but back to Jojo. He's used the actually strongest weapon known to mankind. And this deserves its own slide. The clackers. You know what clackers are. <laughs> If you're not familiar with the toy, I'll put a video or a picture up. But dude, these things hurt more than when a Razor scooter hits your ankle. Like, oh my lord, dude. When you try to do what you're supposed to do and one of those balls flails and hits your hand, it feels like actually the 14th layer of hell. Your hand is fucked, you're one-shotted. Jojo is an incredible fucking genius lord for weaponizing this. 
Like straight up, dude, if I was a pillar man and I saw someone whip out clackers for a fight, I'd be like, fuck this, man. Not worth it. I, I thought we were gonna play fair. But here we are, breaking Geneva Code conventions. Shout out Jimmy Donalds. <laughs> But back to what Jojo has done, he's also defeated the literal ultimate life form, the strongest, the smartest, the fastest. Thousands of years of animal adaptation and evolution have brought birth to the ultimate life form, and he turns into a bird and an armadillo. Like, dog, that just doesn't sound ultimate to me. But we must also ask the question, why do people like Joseph? Why is he so many people's favorite Jojo? He's a douchebag in a weirdly likable way. He nails the character archetype, and look at that yacht. Does it remind you of anyone? The thing about his assholishness and douchebaggery though is that it's usually directed towards the enemies so we can't feel anger towards him. And even when it's not directed at his enemies when he's the douchebag towards Caesar and then they finally become friends, we can see the character progression. We can see how he actually treats people he likes better than he treats his enemies. I'm not gonna say great. More on all that in a sec, but I would also argue that he is perhaps the funniest Jojo. And while incredibly subjective, is he also the hottest Jojo? That's up for you guys to decide, let me know what you think. But largely, he's a cheater, through and through. I mean, he would have lost to the Pillar Man if he had not said, I mean, just give me a month to train, I'll beat you. He was lying out of his fucking teeth. He cheats in life, he cheats in fights, he cheats on his... Technically, we're only going over part two. I'm not a huge fan that he cheated on his wife, but... Is what it is. But on that note, part of what makes him likable is that in part two, he actually does have character development. He goes from a boy to a man. He realizes the severity of the situation, and the way he acts is also realistic. Even when he does cheat on his wife, the way he acts is very similar to how people might act in real life. Shitty as it may be. But he's a fake character. We can forgive him for everything. That's how these things work. I'm a fake character too, so when I do have my controversies, bookmark this. But ultimately what makes people really, really like Joseph is that he gives the people a show. When he is on screen, there is not a boring moment. When he is on screen, all the moments are usually funny and you don't know how they're gonna end. He, in my opinion, is what embodies Jojo's bizarre adventure. You never really know what the fuck is going on. His character interactions with the rest of the splendid, really, cast are awesome. And the story and the narrative that surround him are great, top tier. So now that we've taken a little break for me to glaze Joseph, I also want to talk about his fighting style in JoJo's in part 2 in particular. And let me just say this for JBA as a whole, the JoJo fights are aesthetically and thematically maybe some of my favorite fights in all of anime. And I know that the art style doesn't work for everyone, but the colors, the themes, the anticipation, just how everything feels and comes together works so well. I just realized my mouse was on the screen, I don't know how long it was on the screen for, but I, I ruined the video. I ruined it again. But seriously though, the fights are so different than anything I've ever seen. They're so intricate and so much thought has been put into them. The choreography is amazing that I can't really think of another word to describe JBA fights and the show as... It's art, honestly. It's, it's, it's art. But in regards to part 2 specifically, stands are definitely greater than Hamon in my opinion. They're more creative, they're more unique. The fights are more about discovering what your opponent can do and, and like uncovering a puzzle. But what makes part 2 work in terms of fights in my opinion is that while stands are greater, Hamon leads to more what the fuck moments. Because you can see two characters that are so gapped in terms of power that you know that the underdog is going to win because it's a fucking anime, but you have no idea how. So the fight is interesting throughout. Whereas with stands, it's usually more of an even match to begin with. Yeah, there's some overpowered ass fucking stands, but you know what I'm saying. And last but not least, your next line is dot 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 is perhaps one of the corniest things that I've ever seen a character do as a gimmick, but it goes so far past corny that it loops back around to swaggy and man, every time he says it, is Loki so cathartic and satisfying? <laughs> So in conclusion, what can we say about Joseph Joestar? He is a flawed character in and out of series. From a meta perspective, part two does have its own issues, even though it's my favorite part. And in character, he's, you know, not, not the greatest character. I mean, for instance, he probably hates cat cafes, considering he hates cats and Japan. <laughs> he is, however, a hard protagonist to follow in terms of enjoyment. When part three rolled around, the Jojo just wasn't as liked as Joseph. And I mean, it makes sense. Joseph did a really good job. He absolutely nails the likable asshole archetype. I personally love this. I feel connected to it. And then he also has a love triangle with the Axis powers. He, he teams up with Caesar, who's Italian. He teams up with von Stroheim, who's a Nazi. And he lets his daughter marry a let's. <laughs> That's not how it works, ladies. Please marry whoever you want. Marry a Japanese man. Moving on. <laughs> but social agendas aside, <laughs> he is my favorite JoJo, and arguably the best one. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Joseph Joestar PR team, Joseph Joestar anti-PR team, let me know what you think about the character as a whole. Leave it in the comments below. What do you think about part two? And now if you guys have any other suggestions for any other game series, things to talk about, real life things to do, leave those in the comments down below as well. You are looking so good. If you subscribe, by the way, again, you get aura. I will give you personal aura and I have infinite aura. My Instagram reels tell me that. Goodbye. <laughs> I love you.